Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation Week 5 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students all around the country have sat quizzes on my Diagnostic Questions website. And I've gone into one of these quizzes and chosen three questions. And you can see those three questions on the screen in front of you now. But these aren't just any three questions. These are the three worst answered questions from that quiz. And I'm gonna set you five challenges. So challenge number one is, can you get each of these questions correct? And then once you've done that, what do you reckon the worst answered out of these three questions is? And then I wonder if you can predict the most popular wrong answer for each of these three questions. And then for your fourth challenge, can you explain why a student may choose this popular choice of wrong answer? And then finally, and I think this is the hardest of them all, imagine you were sat next to a student who was convinced that that wrong answer was right. How would you convince them that in fact you're right and in a nice way that they're wrong? So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video, you work your way through these three questions with these five challenges in mind, and then when you're ready, unpause it and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one. Right, so to build up drama, I'm going to reveal these, but in reverse order. So first up is the least worst answered out of these three questions. And it is this question here. Okay, which of the following diagrams shows a plan view of this object? Now, to get this one right, you've got to make sure you know the difference between what a plan view is and what a side view is and what a front view is. As long as you know those, you're laughing. So front's the easiest one. Front is the one when you're looking on straight here. You're looking straight, you're standing in front of this object and looking at it. Side is if you're looking at the side of this object. So your plan is the top. It's as if you're a bird flying over the top and you're looking straight down at this object. So this is after a plan view. So imagine we were a bird flying over the top of this object. We get straight over the top of it. We look vertically down. Which of these three, uh, which of these diagrams can we see? Well, what we would see is we would see the three squares going across here and we'd also see it coming out one. Can you see how this square here kind of, jo kind of jolts out one from this? So it would be three going across like this. My diagrams are terrible, I'll tell you that much. But then also, we would also see this one square coming out front there. We wouldn't be able to see how high up um, uh, or low down it was, but if we were vertically, uh, vert looking vertically down across uh, from, from the sky, looking down at this, we'd see it coming out one. So I think C is the answer to this one. Are we right? Well, yes, we are, but look at that. Only 42% of students agree with us. The most popular choice of wrong answer is A. Now, can you see where A would come from? Why am I to student think that A was the correct answer to this? Well, if we read um, a couple of explanations here, you get this. The plan will need to be a T-shape with an extra block as it has another block onto it. And if it's looked at from the front, you will not be able to see the extra block. I see what's happened here, you know. This isn't the students not being able to picture things. They're picturing it and describing it really well. But I think both of these explanations are looking at it from the front. And that's what I, as I said at the start, unless you know the difference between what a front is, what a side is, and what a plan view is, you're going to really struggle with these kind of questions. How did you get on with that one? Don't worry if you struggled. As we've seen, thousands of students struggled. So now I'm going to reveal what the second worst answered question is. And it is this one here. Now, this is a tricky one if you rush into it. So let's take our time. Joe and Danny share some chocolate in the ratio two to three. I always like to set things out like this when I see this. Joe and Danny share some chocolate in the ratio two to three. Okay. Danny receives 30 more pieces than Joe. 30 more pieces. That isn't Danny receiving 30 pieces, she gets 30 more. Now, there are quite a few uh, quite a few ways of thinking about this. Um, I know lots of you will be familiar with bar modeling, and this is quite a nice way to represent this. So if we have Joe here, and if we have Danny here, then Joe gets two parts and Danny gets three parts. And what do we know about this? Well, we know that this extra bit here, this bit here that Danny gets, that's worth 30 pieces because Danny gets 30 more than Joe. 
So how many does Joe get? Well, that gap there is worth 30. So each one of these pieces that Danny gets must be also worth 30, right? You can see that because we know here that Danny gets 30 more than Joe. It's the only combination that makes sense. So when the question says, how many does Joe receive? Joe gets two parts, two lots of 30. So I think Joe is gonna end up with 60 pieces of chocolate. Are we right? Oh, so which one's that? Sorry, that's D there. Are we right? Let's have a look. We are, but look at that, that's painful, hey? Only 38% of students agree with us with that. Look at A and B, 27% and 22%. Let's focus on A. A is our most popular choice of wrong answer. Why might a student think the answer is 20? Can you see that? Let's have a read of this. If Danny has 30 pieces and it's shared in the ratio two to three, well, Danny doesn't have 30 pieces. Danny gets 30 more pieces. That word there makes all the difference. If you believe Danny has 30 pieces, then Joe's going to get 20 pieces. Simple as that. But of course, that's not the that's not what the question's saying. It's also interesting, by the way, we'll, we won't talk at length about this, to think about where that other popular choice of wrong answer comes from. At 12. And I'll give you a bit of a hint of that. If you were sharing 30 pieces between Danny and Joe, I think that's where this style of answer starts to come from. And that's why it's super important. Your teachers always say this, read the question, read the question, read the question. With these ratio questions, it's so, so, so important you do that because that one extra word changes everything about this question. Okay. Oh, sorry. And I should have said, God, it's bad this, eh? There you go. There, there is a student who thinks the answer is B doing exactly what we spoke about there. Okay, which brings us to the worst answered question out of these three. And it is this one here, enlargement. <sighs> tricky one, tricky one. Okay, the shape is enlarged by scale factor two from the point one four. So from that point there, we are gonna enlarge this shape and we're gonna do it scale factor two. What are the coordinates of the marked point at two two? In, on the enlarged image. So a scale factor two, the way I think about this is, however far away that point is from our center of enlargement, we've got to go twice as far. So a good way to do this is to think in terms of vectors or distances. So to get from here to here, I go down two and across one. So I'm going like that. I'm going down two and I'm going across one. That's scale factor one. So now I'm gonna to have to go down two and across one again to go scale factor two to go twice as far. If you map it out like that, you can't really go too far wrong with these questions. It's also worth checking that your points are all in line. You could get a ruler out there and measure them. They should all, you should be able to draw a, a straight line that goes through your new point, your original point and your center of enlargement. So the only thing left to do is make sure I can read that point. So it's one, two, three across on the X and it hasn't gone up or down on the y, it's on the x-axis, so I think the coordinates of that point are three, zero. Three across, zero up and down from the origin. So I'm going for B for my answer for this one. Let's see if we've got it right. We have, but look at that, only 37% of students agree with us. The most popular choice of wrong answer is C, four, four. Now four, four is absolutely nowhere near the correct answer in terms of its position. So where's four, four coming from? Can you see that? Well, let's have a look. The scale factor is two, therefore you times both coordinates by two. So the student has just looked at that two, two and doubled them to get four, four without accounting for the fact of where the center of enlargement is. Um, is. Just as an extra little twist, four, four is the correct answer to a different question. What question is it? Well, it's the correct answer if you're enlarging from the origin. That's when you can just double your points. But of course, we're not. We are enlarging from this point here, which means that we have to draw our lines and think super carefully about it. So how did you get on with those three questions? Don't worry if you struggled, as we've seen thousands of students struggle with these. But if we can think hard about these questions, hopefully you're on the path to understanding them. Um, if this has whet your appetite for more, then if you head to diagnosticquestions.com forward slash revision 2019, you can try 20 of these quizzes all completely for free. And if you're a teacher watching this, if you go to ed.co.uk, you can assign these quizzes to your students so they receive them regularly, they're marked automatically and so on. It's all completely free. Um, they're the revision schemes of work. And if you want to get your students onto the system so that they can benefit from this and answer on their own devices, easiest way to do it, if you send an email to hello at ed.co.uk, attaching a 
spreadsheet with your students' names and class codes, one of our team can get your kids uploaded for you. Hope you found that useful, and I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. You take care, and bye for now.